Like Dr. Wickler said, we're the Cowboy Motorsports Senior Design Group. I'm Garrett Dollins. I'm Scott Dick. And I'm Logan Gary. <coughs> so as Dr. Wickler talked about, we, uh, we participate in an annual design competition sponsored by ASCD, also known as the American Society of Agricultural and Biological Engineers. They're a big sponsor of the competition, as well as many big names industries, such as Caterpillar, John Deere, NAGCO. About three teams, including <coughs> national and some international teams, participate in the yearly competition. So the competition, we take part in, it's a design competition, so we have a report, we have a presentation, we do some design judging, where they judge on base of how well we designed our tractor, as well as how well we can present the tractor as a production piece. And we also have a poll requirement, a maneuverability requirement, and a durability event where we basically test the tractor and show that it performs the way we designed it. So our goal was to design and build a cost-effective, reliable, and innovative frame, steering system, and suspension system for the team. <coughs> design will take into account the team's budget, our timeline, and our resources available that we raised in the previous year. The first part of the tractor we're going to look at is the frame. Um, these first two requirements here are kind of just what a frame is, kind of the definition of a frame. So our frame needs to withstand the weight of the tractor and forces felt during competition. And it has to give uh, area to mount uh, other components of the tractor onto it. Uh, the last two requirements are the only two requirements given in the rules for quarter scale, <coughs> quarter -scale tractor competition. Uh, it says that the frame has to be less than 96 inches long and it has to be fully customized. This means we can't take a frame off of a lawn mower or a lawn tractor and uh, use it as our own. We have to uh, design our own frame from scratch and use our own design. <coughs> so we started talking to the club about what they wanted us to do with the frame. Uh, we came up with some, some more precise objectives. Uh, they told us they wanted it to be easily manufactured. Um, like Logan was saying earlier, uh, manufacturability has a, uh, a point value in the, um, in the design judging. So the, the better, the easier manufactured it is, the more points you'll get. Um, they also wanted the frame to be fully welded together. Making it fully welded together uh, increases its strength, uh, makes it more dur durable. Um, they wanted the frame to be as lightweight as possible but still be strong enough to support the weight of the tractor. Uh, since the tractor has a weight limit, it's very important to keep uh, everything as lightweight as possible, but still functional. Uh, this last one, they wanted the frame to display the school name and the club name in some, some way along the frame rails. So when we started deciding on what type of frame we wanted to use, we didn't want to just use last year's frame design just because that's what we had been using. We wanted to start from clean slate and make sure we could uh, use the right frame selection for our, um, for our application. So we started looking at what different types of frames you see in industry. Um, the, ones, the ones we found here were the tube frame, the uni unibody frame, and the C-channel frame. Uh, the tube frame is what you mostly see in heavy duty and off-road equipment like semis and tractors and things like that. Uh, it's a very strong frame. It's able to uh, support the weight of the machine and the <coughs> able to put through um, a lot of abuse. Uh, the only uh, backside to that is it's a little bit heavy. Um, it's a little bit too heavy for our application uh, and we don't exactly need all of the strength that it gives. So we did not go with the tube frame. Uh, the next one we saw was the unibody frame. You see this mostly in mass-produced cars. Um, it's a very uh, economical way to do it. Um, most of the major components are just bolted on. Uh, it requires a lot of precise engineering and uh, manufacturing. We were not exactly uh, provided with the type of uh, manufacturing needs that we would need to do this type of system, but we like the idea of being able to bolt on the major components. Um, like I said earlier, that's a, a manufacturability kind of thing where we can uh, do better in that way and gain points in the design competition. Um, we also like the idea of the whole frame being one unit and we can uh, spread forces out throughout the frame whenever it's all connected. 
So even though we would not be able to do this type of frame, we wanted to keep in mind uh, the ideas of the unibody frame that we can apply to our own. Uh, this last one is the C-channel frame. It's like a tube frame except missing one of the side flanges. So as you can imagine, it's a little bit weaker, but it makes it a little bit more lightweight. Um, it is strong enough to support the, the tractor that we will be building uh, if we give it the right support structures and it's a lightweight enough frame. So this is the type of frame that we went with. Uh, like I said, it's a lightweight system um, and we have used it in past years, so it's a proven system. We know how it reacts to different uh, forces of competition. Uh, we know some of the weak points where we need to add different supports. Um, so that's one way we can improve on that. Uh, we also decided to make it easily manufactured. One way we're doing this is by implementing the slot and tab method. As you can see on the picture, um, slot and tab method is where you give the piece you want to mount some tabs and then cut holes in the piece that's being, that the other piece is being mounted on so that it can easily slide in there without any measuring or other uh, measurements like that. Um, this makes uh, manufacturability a lot better. It's uh, a lot faster on the fabrication side because, like I said, there's no need for measuring. Uh, the human error side of it is out of the equation because the holes are already pre-cut and you don't have to have to measure anything. It also makes it easier to weld because all you have to do is slide the piece into the hole and then tack it in. Uh, and then with all these uh, with all the slot and tab stuff, everything will be able to be, major components will be able to be bolted on into the mounting tabs that were welded on the frame. Since we were going with the C-channel frame, we could look at our previous design and kind of see what needed to be improved. Uh, here's some specifications of what the previous design had. had. It was made out of 14 gauge steel, uh, which is 0 .0747 inches. It was five inches tall. Um, the top and bottom flanges were one inch, 17 inches wide, uh, 91 inches long. The bins right before the rear diff mount um, were 45 degree bins, and everything was bolted together. There wasn't anything welded on that frame, and there was also no additional support structures designed into this this, time, this system. Since there were no uh, support structures designed into it, you can see in this picture, there was some good cracking that happened at the top and bottom of the frame at those uh, 45 degree bends right before the rear differential mount. Um, this was due to the fact that we forgot to uh, weld the, the frame at the, at the bends after it was uh, bent for us by uh, Ditch Witch. We should have welded the pieces in there and it would have strengthened it up. Uh, but, you know, hindsight is 2020. Um, but the, the cracks happened uh, because, as you will uh, hear about in a little bit, the suspension uh, was solid. So, whenever the tractor would go over a bump, the frame had to absorb all of the shock from that. And so, when the rear tires would torque a little bit, all the stress caused by that would go right to those cracks and it was released in, uh, through by cracking the frame. To help combat the stress concentrations there, those uh, 45 degree bends, for the new design, uh, we changed the 45 degrees down to 30 degrees. As you can see in the SOLIDWORKS simulation um, that we did on these pieces, um, there's a lot less stress in the 30 degree bends. There's a lot of stress along the bend here on the 45, and you can see even a little bit more right in the bend as compared to the, what, the, what is seen by the 30 degrees. Then it's less in the 30 degree bends because whenever a force acts along the flange of the frame, more of the force is uh, transferred down the length of the frame instead of perpendicular to it, which was what caused the cracks in last year's frame. Uh, to further strengthen the rear end, um, we added some cross members and supports right around the weak point at those bends. Um, we put one support um, right before the bends, as you can see in the SOLIDWORKS model, and then another one at the very end of the frame to box in that weak point and further strengthen it. 
Um, since we boxed in the rear end, we had to redesign the rear differential mount. We ended up making it better and uh, easier uh, manufactured by making it to bolt onto the end of the frame instead of sliding in like the other one did. Um, and this makes it easier to, uh, uh, make, to do maintenance on the rear end because by undoing the six bolts that hold uh, the rear end to the frame, you can successfully split the tractor. It also helps with manufacturability because the rear end can be um, can be built as a subassembly and then bolted on later on in production whenever it is um, whenever the frame is complete. Ready to put on. So the next place we looked at, or the next place we found that was a failure on last year's frame was that the front axles. Um, even, like I said, there was no uh, uh, support structures designed into it. And so the frame actually wanted to, the top wanted to bend in toward itself, and the bottom wanted to spread apart whenever the weight of the tractor, whenever the weight was, the tractor's weight was sitting on the frame. Um, so at competition, uh, they noticed that the frame was split, was twisting in on itself, and they had to quit welding some straps along the bottom to keep it from doing that, to keep the frame together. So for our new design, we incorporated the same idea. The A-arm mounts are now uh, part of the support structure. It runs from one frame, one frame rail to the other to keep the frame together and keep it from splitting, from torquing in on itself. Once we decided on all of the support structures, we went to we started looking at the shape of the frame rail itself. Um, the first one we came up with was what we call the wide engine frame. You can see it's uh, wider at the front where the engine would sit. We did this so that we could lower the engine to lower our center of gravity. Um, this ended up causing problems down the line with drivetrain and transmission and other mounting of that stuff. Uh, it ended up causing more problems than it solved, so we did not go with this system. The next one we came up with was what we call the short frame. You can see it's very skinny. Uh, we did this to make it more lightweight. It wasn't quite as strong as uh, as other uh, other um, designs we came up with, but with the right support structures, we thought it would be able to work. Unfortunately, it did not. Uh, it was not compatible with our new front axle design. So we had to modify it, and we eventually uh, came up with this frame rail, and it's a little bit wider around the front axle to accommodate the new front axle design. Uh, we put it under a SOLIDWORKS simulation of about twice the amount of weight we see uh, at any time during competition. Um, you can see it was uh, very strong underneath these forces. There's a little bit of stress concentrations here at the ends, that's because of how it was mounted in SOLIDWORKS. You have to set parameters, and uh, those forces will not be seen whenever it's actually mounted on the tractor. Um, a little bit about this frame. This frame rail, it is 14 gauge steel. Um, we decided on 14 gauge because uh, last year's frame was just 14 gauge and it ended up cracking, but it didn't have support structures. So this year's frame, we decided we could go with 14 gauge again and uh, avoid the cracking by uh, putting in more support structures. Once we had all the pieces completed, we started putting them together in SOLIDWORKS to uh, see how they would look together and how everything would fit, and also to see how, uh, how it would react underneath certain forces. Um, the main change we did as compared to last year's frame was we reduced the width from 17 inches down to 14 and a half inches. Uh, this made the each cross member um, uh, two and a half inches shorter, which made uh, uh, which made everything uh, lighter when compared to last year's tractor if it had been 17 inches. After everything was put together, we ran a simulation on the whole assembly to see how it would react to the forces felt during competition. You can see uh, it is, most of it is blue, the color down here, which makes it, means that it is very strong and will withstand those forces that it would see. Once all the pieces were uh, 
design. We sent all, all the drawings off to Ditchwich to be uh, cut and bent for us. Um, they graciously donated uh, all the material for it. Um, once we had all the pieces, we uh, gave them to the BAE lab personnel to weld up for us. It ended up being 27 total pieces uh, that were part of the frame that are now one piece after they've been welded together. Uh, it took the guys in the BAE lab about a day, a little over a day to complete it. And they actually complimented our slot and tab design and said it made it a lot easier and a lot faster to put the frame together. <clears throat> after it was, uh, after the frame was completed and welded together, uh, we did some uh, very unscientific tests on it. Um, we wanted to see just how it would react uh, to some basic torsion tests. So we, uh, we clamped one end of the frame down and a team member stood on the other side and twisted it back and forth to see how much force it would take to uh, twist the frame. And based on our memory of how last year's frame um, reacted under the same forces, it was a, this year's frame was a lot stiffer and we were very satisfied with how it, uh, with how it uh, reacted to those forces. Uh, we will do much more observations and some testing whenever the whole tractor is complete and we're able to do some test pulls. We will like to watch and see how the frame, where, where, it, where, the, where it moves around and how it needs to be strengthened to see if there's anything we need to add to it. And a successful frame will be a design that will have no deformities or failures. Uh, so we're trying to avoid what happened last year with these big cracks in the top and bottom. All right, so the next component of our design was to design a new steering system for our tractor. So the goals that we set forth for ourselves and were given to us by the club was it had to be a usable system, it had to be adjustable for various operators, it had to be reliable, so it required minimal maintenance, which also meant it had to be low maintenance. So last year's design, which you can see up on the screen, it was pretty simple and straightforward. It was just a drive shaft straight into a rack and pinion, which then attached straight to the steering knuckles on the tires. So it was very easy to manufacture, it was very few components. It was simple and it was very lightweight. But with these strengths, it also came with some weaknesses. It was a straight one-to-one -one ratio, so however much force it required to turn the tire on the ground was how much force we had to put into the steering wheel at the operator end. This also resulted in very poor turning radius, as you had to struggle to turn, turn the steering wheel so you couldn't actually get into a complete turn. We also came across a toe alignment problem while designing this year's suspension. So you can see on the left side of the screen, the air spring is fully inflated in the driving position. Your tire is straight on as it should be. But when we lowered it down to a pull position, we found that the tires were getting pushed out into a toe out position. So we, wanted to, we decided we need to look into this some more. We did some background research with the Ackerman steering geometry and parallel set steering geometry. So in the top picture, you can see the Ackerman steering geometry where each tire turns a different amount the inner tire turns a bit more than the outer tire as it has a tighter circle that needs to maintain to keep concentric circles to make a good turning radius. Your parallel set is when the tires turn in the exact same direction, so you're fighting yourself as you go through the turn. So with this year's steering design, we decided to keep the rack and pinion system from previous years as the club's very familiar with its workings. We have a bunch laying around to test on the tractor and test different mechanical linkages. We also decided to use some chromoly turnbuckles as we found in the previous year, these are very strong, very durable, and they're very lightweight since we do have a weight requirement for the tractor. We also added an inline gear reduction, which reduced the steering effort by half compared to the previous year. We also added the larger steering wheel, which also aids in our turning, rate, turning effort and steering. We also improved the geometry from a straight parallel set to a more close to a Ackerman steering design. So you can see the pictures above. Here's the assembled steering from this previous from the, this year's design. So on the right side of your screen you'll see that the <coughs> rack and pinion is straight in line with the steering knuckles and the turnbuckles are almost perfectly parallel to the ground. This allows us to transfer all the forces going through the rack and pinion to our tire so we don't lose anything through an angle like we saw in the previous year's design. 
We also, also decided to move the steering knuckles below the tractor so we're not fighting ourselves when we raise and lower the tractor to help solve the toe-in, toe-out problem. So we've been doing some testing, and we have still further testing to do, but we noticed that the gear reduction significantly reduces the force required to turn the steering wheel. As the tractor nears completion, when we get some test pulls in, we will also see how well it handles underneath pulling conditions, as well as just driving around up the field. And we reached our design goal of reducing the overall steering effort of the tractor. So for the suspension aspect of the senior design, uh, our group and the Calvary Motorsports Club sat down and set two main objectives. Uh, the first objective is we wanted to have an adjustable ride height. And the second objective is to have, just to improve the ride quality of the tractor for the operator. Uh, the first objective is because when we're pulling, we want to have the tractor in the center of gravity as low as possible. But during competition, we have other events such as this is the durability of it where we need to be able to raise it up so that we don't have any clearance issues and also for doing tech in we have to be able to drive up on scales and the brake stand here so having the adjustable ride height really helps with maneuvering around and uh, the improved ride quality is mainly just for the operator and to reduce the amount of stresses that the frame sees. So the previous year's design was just a totally rigid system uh, it had a couple of advantages. It was very lightweight and it was adjustable. However, uh, the adjustability was limited by thread links, so it wasn't it, it wasn't a large amount of adjustability. And then there was also no articulation and no damping action going on. So we decided to start with a blank slate because we didn't have any suspension before, and we looked at five different systems that were a possibility. These are coilover shocks, linear actuators, hydraulic cylinders, uh, air shocks, and air springs. Two of these were thrown out because they could not meet the two main objectives that our group set. So we were left with hydraulic cylinders, air shocks, and the air springs. Uh, then we set a decision matrix based off of these criteria, cost, weight, strength, pulling performance, durability, adjustable, adjustability, and ride quality. Each of these, each of these uh, criteria were given a certain percentage value. Um, this was based off of what's most important during the competition and then from that each of the concepts we had were given a point value from one to three based off how they would perform and we ended up seeing that the air springs overall were the best choice for uh, our project. Testing. So we took last year's tractor last semester and uh, had some air springs that we put on it. We went through three different iterations before we had a working prototype. Initially, we discovered that the air springs that we had were not sized properly and could not lift the weight of a fully ballasted tractor. To compensate for this, we tried to move them out more to be able to get more of a lever arm to see if they could actually lift the tractor. Uh, then we ran into a few clearance issues. Once we got that worked out, then we had a working prototype. And here's a picture of um, what it looked like when we got it all sorted out. And here's a video of last year's tractor with um, the new suspension. <coughs> So as you can see here, it, did, it does raise the nose of the tractor like we want. However, there, there's that major toe-in and toe-out issue that Logan was talking about a little bit. So for this semester, I wanted to make sure that we had the proper size air springs selected so that it could handle all of the weight that the tractor would see during competition. Um, so if you look at the top A-arm and treat it as a simple B, here's a diagram of all the forces and reactions that it sees and the different variables that we can change such as you know, the center distance from the air spring to the pivot points, how big the air spring is itself and how much clearance we want to have between it and the tire so that we can make sure that no rubbing occurs. Using this, we decided to look at three different air springs and we came up with, uh, we decided on this middle one here and it has a safety factor of 1.23.
This is high enough because there's no <coughs> danger to the operator if something were to fail during the system. You cannot lose controllability. There are safety bump stops installed and other safety uh, interlocks that will keep you safe. So the safety factor of 1.23 is plenty for this project. And this picture on the left here is the pneumatic system that runs the airbags and the air uh, compressor that we have. And then on the right, you can see this is initial fabrication of the A-arms. And here we're just testing to make sure that the linkages and how the A-arms move up and down are um, as we designed. A few more pictures. This is with uh, the, most of the suspension put on. And then here in the picture on your right, you can see these are scales that we have. So we zeroed them, loaded the tractor on them, and then weighted it up to 1,500 pounds, which is the max amount of weight we're allowed to have during pools, and then cycled the suspension about five times to make sure that everything was working properly and that it worked really good. And here's another video of the uh, new tractor and the new suspension. Right here. So in this video, you can see that initially from the very nose of the tractor down to the ground is about five inches, and then when it's in its fully raised position, that's at 17. So that is plenty of ground clearance for any kind of uh, anything that the tractor will need to do during competition. Uh, A-arm design. The A-arms were designed with one inch chromoly tubing. It's a super lightweight material. It's very, very strong. It's great for this application. Uh, we knew this from last year's design, it included it, but we needed to do a few uh, updates to it as far as serviceability and manufacturability goes. So a few places where we worked on them is where the ball joint tab slides or is connected to the A-arm itself. This is last year's picture on the left. Um, being able to weld this surface is difficult, so instead we made it where you can slide the tab in and it gives you more uh, welding surface all around so it's stronger and it actually uses less uh, half inch plate material and then here you can see uh, this was another after the fact modification to last year's tractor when uh, the frame was bending in on itself so now the tabs that are right here this is all one piece that's been welded together this is a diagram of the pneumatic system that actually controls the air um, spring system that I showed you earlier. Number one and two are the valves that are used. Uh, number four is a quick disconnect. So the system is separated into an upper and lower half. Uh, in the upper half, if you want to, there's a switch up by the air compressor. You can press it and it breaks contact to the switch on the dash that controls uh, your, ride, your ride height adjustment and then it also kicks the pump on and pressurizes it up to 150 psi so you can fill the tires on the tractor or fill an auxiliary tank uh, for other uses and then in the lower part of in the lower section of the system design there are here is a pop-off valve to protect it the air springs are rated at 100 psi so that pop-off valve is 90 PSI to protect it and then here is a Schrader valve so let's say you have a failure on your air compressor if it goes down you can bring an outside air source in and still be able to inflate the air springs to be able to maneuver around. And then here's the electrical uh, diagram that controls it. As you can see here the double relay is what is what breaks contact between the two the auxiliary switch and then this is your right height control switch that's up on the dash. Uh, this is a safety interlock so that if the operator gets off and wants to fill the tank, if someone else is around and they accidentally hit that switch, there's no possibility of a pinch hazard or danger to the operator that is trying to use the auxiliary fill port there um, with the moving suspension components. Here's a cost breakdown of everything that we did for our senior design project. Uh, it's broken down into two different ways. 
The top table, as you can see, this is broken down into material cost, fabrication, labor, and then purchase parts. Uh, obviously, the purchase parts was significantly more than everything else. Um, like I said we, before, we've designed to lower the material cost, the fabrication, and the labor cost, and so I think we we're pretty successful in that. And then on the bottom, this is broken down into the three different components we worked on: the suspension, steering, and frame. And uh, so there's a price breakdown on that as well. So another component to the design competition that ASAB puts on is analysis of your design through a failure mode analysis. So we decided to do one for our design systems of suspension, the steering, and the frame. And so we basically went through as a group and thought of everything that could possibly go wrong with our tractor, wrote it all down, and then using the FEMA analysis, we found that everything was below the risk priority number, or RPM, that is known as 99, which is given out by ASAB and the competition rules, so we figured that all of our designs met and exceeded the requirements given them to us. Another, another part of senior design that we want to talk about is we like to involve our freshmen in our projects. So part, we have two freshman groups we work with. One group decided, decided to help us design a rear differential mount. So on the right you can see what they ended up coming up with, which was had some similarities to what we came up with as a group. We also had another group help us design the mounting bracket for our transmission, as it's a, it's a strange shape and it allowed them to learn some on how to use SOLIDWORKS and to measure properly. So before competition, obviously the tractor is not completely finished yet. Uh, what we have left is to finalize all the fabrication. Uh, we need to do some testing. We'll take the tractor out once it's completed and do some test spools and then also some durability testing and then after that we'll blow the tractor apart, paint it, and then load it and head to Peoria, Illinois. Thank you for your time. Are there any questions? On your frame design, were you able to maintain or decrease the weight of the frame this year versus last year? It's actually a little heavier than what last year's was, mainly because all the support structures designed into it. Um, we were willing to take an increase in uh, weight to maintain you know, usability, so it is actually a little heavier. Um, earlier in the presentation, you said that uh, last year's had some issues with uh, the turning radius. With the improved uh, steering design, what do you improve that from? It hasn't been measured yet, is, but we're, once the tractor gets running, we'll get to measure how, how well it turns in comparison to last year. Last year didn't really have much of a turn rate, it, just, it kind of went forward and moved sideways if you wanted it to. Is that uh, that logo that says on the, on the frame body, it says Cowboy Motorsports, um, does that <coughs> weaken the frame? To any degree, or did you do any calculations on the? Um, in that area, there's not a lot of you know, stress. Most of the stress is at the front axle and at the rear end where we box it in. So right there is uh, not a whole lot of stress. I did some uh, uh, solver simulations with some of the letters in there. I didn't show them all up there, but there wasn't a whole lot of stress concentrations around those corners like you would think. So you know, it doesn't affect it much in that area. You said you added gear reduction uh, to try to make it easier to turn. You know how many turns you've added? To try to get right to that. It went from one turn to two, so it was just a one to two. Okay. So you have twice as many turns, mm -hmm. yeah. and you'll be, you think you'll be able to get through your new mm -hmm. yes. So you kids seem to be working independently. Is there a group amongst you that coordinates the various components going lots of different directions? Or do you pretty much pull them together and then find the issues you need to solve afterwards? No, we definitely work together. So us three and then the rest of Cowboy Motorsports that does the uh, drivetrain, designs the exhaust, the operator station, all of that, we work together constantly. <coughs> We don't have an, an officially appointed head of that, but 
I have acted as that, and then also the other members. Um, we're, we're a good team, and so we're constantly around each other, and uh, so yes, there's lots of communication that goes on with that. Uh, the full tractor was designed in SolidWorks before, so um, all of those issues, a lot of those issues were worked out before even fabrication started. So yeah, we definitely worked together before, uh, you know, on all of that, fitting everything together, making sure that parts are going to fit, not getting in each other's way. How do you improve the uh, towing issue with the suspension adjustment? So by moving the rack and pinion below the frame and then turning the knuckles upside down, we were, we were able to put everything more in line. And then also by doing that and shortening the rack, we make the distance between the pivot point on those tie rods and the pivot points on the A-arms the same. So when it's a four bar linkage like that and it moves up and down, it has the same radius, which doesn't pull that steering tab in and out like it did before. And so that's how we fix that problem. Okay, any other questions for this group? Let's uh, give them a round of applause.